Welcome to Tea Time Talks, where we explore the passion and stories about and around the game of golf. Today, we are really honored to have one of the most charismatic personalities and the visionary leader, Mr. Anirudh Sivlekar. He is the chairman of the Oxford Group and a very, very passionate individual and a great golfer and an amazing human being. So, right from creating the Oxford Golf Resort, to his ideas on growing the game of golf, how he's made the Oxford Golf Resort a model of excellence in terms of hospitality and the game. So let's hear it straight from him and deep dive into his journey about golf and beyond. Mr. Sevleka, you've had an illustrious career as a real estate developer. Could you tell us how this idea of golf and your love for this game began and how it has helped you shape up the journey of business and life? Well, I'm a first generation businessman and uh, I started, uh, I mean, I de delved into real estate at the age of uh, 30. When I was 30, it's about 30 years that I've been in the business of real estate. And I've done projects, smaller to bigger as time went. I didn't have a godfather, so I had to learn it all myself. Wow. And I had to create my own story. But there are two things which drives me. One is my intuition and one is my intent. So I'm so focused about all this that the moment I feel that I can do something and I can do it right, then there is no looking back. So that's basically the basic fundamental of my, you know, growth in the real estate business. So golf I took up pretty late. Um, I was about in the 40s approximately, 20 years ago. And uh, I went to the golf course, tried a hand, a family went and I went. And first I was thinking, that you know, such a small ball and you keep playing for four hours and you put it in a small hole. So what is this game about? It intrigued me. The moment I understood what the game is all about, I realized that it's one of the greatest game on earth. Right. For the only reason is that this is the only game you play against yourself. Correct. This is the only game which challenges you. It grounds you. It's such an amazing game. Right. I mean, as time went, uh, I realized that, you know, there are so many facets to this game which can really ground a person. You think you're Superman, but maybe you're not. So that could be one way of looking at my interest or love for the game. In real estate, the real estate quotient, let us say, if I have added to the game of golf, is due to uh, valuation. All over the world, anything that's green and anything that's blue gets a premium. Ask me how. How is that? Okay. Green is... Lawns, greenery, gardens, trees, plantation, parks is green. Right. Your apartment, your villa overlooks the green, it's a premium. You go, you overlook the ocean, the rivers, the lakes, the sea, anywhere. You overlook the water, it's a premium. Golf combines both, both. and gives you two premiums in one. Wow. Excellent. So that became <laughs> a basic fundamental of creating real estate around the golf course. Fantastic. And that's how we are at the Oxford Golf Resort. Excellent. And it's always it's always a pleasure looking out of your window, looking at manicured lawns, you know, fountains around you, mm. the sand bunkers, as you said. So definitely a great premium and a great thought on how a real estate uh, development can actually yes. come around a golf course and add premium to it. Yes. As someone who's made such a significant impact on the golfing scene in the country, any particular moment or event that stands out in your mind uh, about the turning point on how you decided to make it big. Turning point to make it big, well, you in, would mean by what? In uh, terms of the golfing scene, like... Uh, see, I'll tell you how golf helps you, okay? Well, let me tell you in a different perspective. You play with strangers right. all the time. You travel, you want to play golf, you play with strangers. You play with somebody who's older to you, who's younger to you. Golf is all about networking. It's a great game, but it's a great network as well. And you play for four to five hours together. Right. Then you have a breakfast or a coffee together. And you develop a bond. Golf helps you create acquaintances. I would not say friends, but acquaintances for sure. Now, how you use them over a lifetime is something, is your talent. So, if you can develop such a large network. I've played with strangers. I've played with top bureaucrats. I've played with politicians, I've played with film stars, I've played with cricketers. And just imagine the kind of network you can create. Right. 
because once you play for four hours, I'm sure you're not going to forget each other. True. So that's the beauty of this game. And they say that uh, playing a round of golf with someone truly showcases the person's character in the four to five hours that you're there with them. So it, they say. Is it true? Uh, what do you What do you think, sir? Well, it does because I think uh, the character is something. Uh, let's say cheating. Right. Could be a negative. Uh, so. In this game, I've seen particularly, cheating is of the highest importance. You cannot cheat. Right. I mean, cheat meaning even move the ball an inch. It's not permit. It is not the culture of golf. Right. It is not the ethics of golf. So uh, I think yes, you can determine a character. You can see people in a rush, people who are patient. You can gauge a person's personality. Right. Definitely, because this is a game of patience. It's a, it's an art. It's a game of motion. It's a game of rhythm. Right. So it's not a game of strength. Correct. So I think so. And also the etiquettes that people show while playing the game, you know, the respect that they give. This game is all about a lot of etiquettes, a lot of uh, formalities. Uh, so that as well. And as you said, uh, it teaches you a lot about life. I mean, if you're cheating, you're cheating yourself. Uh, because True. you're playing against yourself uh, on the golf course. And you, and you don't sleep well thereafter. You don't sleep well. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. So, sir, you've also been really instrumental in the Indian Golf Union. Yes. And you've uh, actually founded and created the Golf Industry Association in India. Yes. Uh, which is definitely, you know, helping the game grow and formalizing it, structuring it, making it more organized. Yes. Can you tell us a little more about that? Oh yes, a lot to tell. Uh, well, I was with the Indian Golf Union for a long, long time, right. representing Western India. And then I got the opportunity to be the president. And uh, so I had a long tenure of about 10 years in the Indian Golf Union. The Indian Golf Union is basically amateur sports. Right. So the game for youngsters, the kids of three categories, sub-junior, junior, mid-junior mid and all that. So uh, it's great. These are uh, grassroots stories. And there is the development that happens. And then they go on to become professionals if they wish to. Right. So uh, in the Indian Golf Union, we've had so many um, aspects. It's a very uh, organized story where every region of the country plays. The good golfers come up. They are, they are made to play together. They are made to play competitions. And then the champions arrive. Post my term with the president as being president, uh, in fact, I was very inspired by my architect, an Australian called Phil Ryan. He, well, he inspired me to, and told me, see, there is a IGU for the kids, there is a PGTI uh, for professionals, there is a Women's Golf Association. Where is the industry association? Right. You are a golf course owner, you are part of the industry. And why don't you lead it since you have led different organizations? So that went about 13 years ago to form the Golf Industry Association. Wow. So I was the founder president, by coincidence, by luck, whatever. And I collected a team of great golf course owners, manufacturers, equipment suppliers and things like that. Right. And what was our purpose? Our purpose was very simple. How do you grow the game? If we as business of golf don't grow the game, we don't grow our business. True. So we all got together. The organization took a slow start, it took some time. Recognition took some time. Now the government recognizes us, the tourism department recognizes us. And what we are trying to do in the GIA is to foster comradeship in the industry. Right. First, we should all be a one big group. And it's not a large group because there are certain number of golf courses and there are certain number of suppliers and there are certain number of equipments. Right. 50, 60, but they are very powerful. They can make a difference. There is a voice. So, GIA got formed. Then it went on and on and on. And this year, our vision is very clear as the board. We have to grow the game. We have to get people to play golf. We have to introduce it to places it has never been introduced. Right. How do we represent and do that? Maybe I can tell you something more later. Wow, fantastic. That will be interesting, sir. And uh, coming back to this, uh, you know, your passion about growing this game in the country, I really want to know your dream and your vision behind creating this amazing heaven called the Oxford Golf Resort. So, please tell us in detail, sir, how you went about this and how you've made this as one of the best 
golf courses in the country you know what that would go with my personality a little bit true okay, <laughs> okay. so the problem with me i have a big problem i dream too much okay since childhood i am a dreamer so i only dream i dream in the day and i dream in the night so i had this once i started loving the game i started became passionate about it i started loving it and in my home course at the pune club then i became the captain i got to manage the golf course right so as the captain you are can manage the golfers you are the number one guy there post my captaincy i became the president of the pune club when i became the president it became even more easier for me because i had financial control also so how to develop all the sports activities i'm a right. sportsman basically so and i took to the sport now that gave me the idea that i'm a real estate developer i have to add keep adding value in some way or the other why don't i create a world class facility and it all goes back to a story where you know i have always thought over my career as i grew that what is it that i'm going to leave behind when i go go out, go for good i mean is there a legacy is there a dream un, of, which will be fulfilled is there a story that people can tell can i make a difference so this is the difference wow and as you said i mean you you dream of things but it has value only if you can execute it well agreed and uh, you could have chosen to uh, you know just build a, another golf course in the country and in the city but creating a place like this where the entire country wants to come and play where the who's who of the country have played not just the country but across the entire world i've seen so many cricketers from all over the world who come to play in pune they do make it a point that they want to play at the oxford golf yes. resort so how how i mean how did you go in such deep details of because i know you and know your personality you will never settle for anything less but right from <laughs> the grass that you want on the fairways to the shape of the greens to the ups and downs in the entire golf course frankly if you ask me i have been very deeply involved and i had a great architect to help me he involved me and uh, so so let's talk about the creation of the golf course first right. so i said let's make it amazingly beautiful let's make it in my words a sexy golf course right not just beautiful so he says oh my god question mark how do you make it that way so we had the hills and dales here so we said let's use land to advantage let's play make it the way it is people might might find it tough people might find it a little difficult it is not a walking course by the way mine is purely a golf cart uh, right. buggy use course and uh, so this idea just kept developing our grass is one of the finest grass we have the sea, uh, seaside fast film grass even through covid we maintained it at this pristine correct status in spite of covid times right that's because i just love this game so much and i just uh, feel that you know how do i grow this game how do i get many people to play this game how do i get youngsters how do we create champions because once india has two three big champions this game is going to fly for india true it's just a question of creating those two or three champions right then real estate of course is a premium so i went on and i just kept acquiring land i said then if you have to do and i can't do anything small maybe it's like a sickness i can't do small so i have to do big so i said it has to be championship shai it is a championship 135 acre golf course it has to be one of the largest townships in the city it is a 1000 acre township <laughs> so i mean i'm not bragging about it but it's just the way i think i can't right. help it right like amazing sir i mean that is something incredible and as you said about uh, that the country needs you know one or two champions and then the game is going to really explode uh why do you say that i mean tiger woods came right golf became famous right okay so you name a champion of a country the country flew in that particular sport true it's because then they they look up to it the youngsters have some they need something to look up to you have to have a champion you have to have a star you have to have that uh, aspiration right. based on uh, an individual Right. and if it's an indian it's aspirational that's true and also i've seen uh, i mean the beauty of this golf course coming back to it there are peacocks i would <laughs> say are like the four caddies 
I true. Like there are so many peacocks all over uh, the golf course on the fairways, and uh, sometimes if we are lucky, we get to see them dance, and uh, it's just an such an amazing sight. So uh, you know why don't people come and try this out on their own? Do you because I feel that they need quite a lot of push. Uh, is there any mindset issue? Is there a block, a mental block that people have to come and try this sport? Uh, I don't think so. I think this sport is not in our bloodline. See, the British came with cricket. They popularized it. Cricket became famous, and we rule the world now. Right. Uh, golf was again brought by the British. If you see, the history right. goes back to Scotland. Of course, the second oldest course is in India. But uh, post that, what happened is, I probably it just didn't kick off because people didn't understand golf. People need to get educated about the sport. People have to understand the advantages, the greatness of the sport. So right. unless the greatness of the sport is understood and unless you feel it, it's not going to really happen. However, I think now the time is not for the people of my times to take to the game. It's people of the younger time. I am extremely ambitious. I am extremely focused and I have a mission on hand to make sure that kids from the age of 6 to 15, that's the bracket, in various schools right. or wherever we can influence them. And I can through the GIA because I've got a very strong committee and positive industry people who all want to increase the game. So if we can inculcate the sport at some level in schools, right. that's where this game is going to kick. I completely agree and uh, I see that happening with uh, the Flame University which is, yes. which is again uh, one of uh, your uh, babies part of our group and, yeah uh, i see a lot of uh, their students coming and having a, a small course on uh, introduction to golf yes. and i see them putting and hitting yeah, the driving yeah, range yeah. so so that's uh, that's truly a really good way to where people can actually at a young age pick up the sport and start playing now you've been recognized and uh, awarded as the asian golf Hall of Fame and what does this mean to you personally sir and how do you see it influencing the future through your contributions of this? Awards don't mean success. Awards have come and go. I don't value them in terms of putting like you know a metrics to it. I think a person or an institution or an activity can only be measured by its success. Right. So success is the kicker. And how do you define that? You create a story, your facility, you make it successful, you have a hell of a lot of people coming, playing, enjoying it, understanding what we have to offer. I am an Indian. I want to make Oxford a legacy to remember. I want a few generations ahead to understand and appreciate that this was um, something that was created. Yeah. So, if that has to happen, my city has to be proud of me, my country has to be proud of me, and associations within the country and the golfers have to feel the love for this sport and Oxford. So, I think this is my mindset, right. not an award. Wow. And is that uh, why you've come up with a tagline for Oxford? I love my Oxford Golf Resort. Okay, <laughs> there is a reason for that. Okay. Okay, let me explain to you. If you ask me, are you going to ask me a question who I love playing with here? Of course. If that's in the pipeline? Yes, it is. I can answer it now. Right, sure. Okay. <laughs> so, there are two people I can identify who I love to play the game with. There are these two people who prompted me to put this tagline. Right. in different ways at different times. Interesting. Yeah. Let me name them. One is of course a legend, a legendary sportsman, a cricketer, Kapil Dev. Wow. We, I call him Kapil Paji. Right. Uh, very dear to us, very dear to the entire golfing community. True. true One right. of the most fabulous human I have noticed. Correct. So I ca call him the greatest of all times. The goat. As a sportsman. Wow. Amazing. <laughs> right. Because he is a human who is the greatest of all right. times. He has a heart. He understands sensitivity. 
and he told me one day and he packed me on the back and said this is the i love your golf course this is the best golf course that i played in and i wow. enjoy this course wow one right the other one is again the greatest of all times in the spiritual world okay so that's sadguru oh my god i have played <laughs> numerous times with this great personality and uh, he, he always used to say i love your golf course wow so that they both said in different ways but i translated it to i love my <laughs> oxford golf resort <laughs> that's amazing i mean so uh, what, what do you talk to them in the four five hours oh <laughs> with kapil dev it's different completely different he is a hardcore golfer he can teach you the skills of golf wow okay he can tell teach you how to read the green different talent altogether right you play with sadguru it's mesmerizing for and a half to 5 hours you get mesmerized wow i have not seen anybody i play with who can be hilarious who can be as serious who can be innovative in every hole that i play in the mindset in the thinking in a conversation that's sadguru wow i just love them <laughs> truly so you're truly blessed i mean uh, absolutely <laughs> so much positivity uh, around him and therefore around you now uh, that is this is incredible so coming back to growth of golf through youngsters uh, what is your vision for young people how can they champion this game how can they uh, i mean become professionals take the name of the country forward uh, do we have enough facilities for them do we need to develop something more for them in terms of coaching fitness strength meditation What couple of things uh, i think it's uh, not very difficult we have a hell of a lot of golf courses now we've right. got about 200 in the country but if you go on playable basis 50 okay right. private courses like mine so many coming up every second day there's a golf course being announced somewhere although they are real estate oriented they are still golf courses right. all are going to have communities of 1000 2000 people Correct. all are going to look at that golfers from their window and start playing the game right for the youngsters and especially you know i am trying to focus on a very different concept i have been thinking dreaming and conceptualizing and planning how do i take this game to rural india okay wow interesting you might find that's a crazy idea right it's a elite man's game it's a rich man's game only the rich can afford it nobody else can afford it myth i don't believe it it's how you project it it's how you look at it i mean come on in any government school tomorrow if i lay out a net and i just give some sticks and i just want them to hit the ball right. for a year or two they should just keep hitting the ball we will find the talent we have csr we have corporates we golf is a csr approved sport right exploit them get them out put them into a better education and get them to learn golf why it's difficult i don't see i think rural india has massive talent massive talent right and if that talent can be nurtured because they are hardcore they've learned the hardy way they've lived the hardy life they cannot they cannot be better sportsmen than you find in the rural india true so what what is impossible that's a fantastic take sir never thought of something like that and that is where the majority <laughs> of the population is what do you think that the future holds in terms of golf for india is going to grow uh <clears throat> people have understood there is money in golf right. first and foremost understand as a social community or as us it's extremely important in our circle of social uh, strata societies we have to tell the parent whose kids are young that this game has money mm. and it makes a great character out of a boy true or a girl this message is very important we have to train the community to understand this what are parents doing they are looking at educate 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 because you have to get in the finance this field that field you have to make money this that sports is not a priority in our country true it is not a priority sports has to overtake education it's not about education and i have played with great people and they all have understood this but somehow the other we are not able to translate it maybe through the mediums like you and the podcast if we can push these uh, matters get parents to think right. get parents to understand there's a lot of money in this game allow them to play the game right and also do you do you say the money is uh, due to winning certain prize money or a tournament or 
even beyond that beyond. Uh, because of networking and you know shaping yourself as a better person as you said it defines it makes a good character no but when i mentioned this i meant making money out of the game out of the game so for youngsters that is the priority correct network is today is not important to them correct so they start churning out money because there are so many tournaments happening right prize goes from number 1 to number 15 right. you still get money correct so i mean you can continue to play improvise go into the professional circuit also what india needs to promote this game is to get a lot of foreign coaches now right till we are ready right so till we are ready we have to get these foreign we have over here so similarly every golf course is getting them every golf course through my association of the golf industry we are telling them allow 20 people to play for free allow 20 kids to practice right. allow them subsidized stories if we don't do it who will do it right for us the more people play the more income we make true and uh, and it's a social cause correct why not do it right not a big deal right and do you see even the government helping or more help to be given by uh, the government of uh, india than so coming to the government in our association the industry association we have made proposals now in fact i'm going to uh, release our mandate for the next 2 years as to what do we want to achieve so we can op- let's say i'll give an example of my city right. pune the pune corporation has 100 playgrounds right okay located all over the city in beautiful locations if we could convince them to give us a section just to put up a little driving area and get in the evening free of cost people to just come with a little club and hit the ball and start playing the game imagine that entire campus community or the vicinity will understand what is golf right you see today we have to teach them and then tell them and then explain it is and then make them play it correct that will all vanish right you've gone straight over to step 4 right people start hitting it the moment one kid starts hitting it nice he is going to tell his parents i am playing golf right we have to do that correct and i can do it we, we are going to, we have we are hell bent on doing it right. and why not we'll approach the government the ministers the bureaucrats there are so many bureaucrats who play golf but they have not nobody has come up with a proposal as to how to promote it right. i think the key lies in that true and that's correct. what we'll do now excellent and i think that will really help people because so if you see golf uh, for a non golfer uh, even if you watch it on tv the commentary is boring it goes on for 5 to 7 hours <laughs> people don't understand you know uh, what is he doing by hitting a small ball into that hole but once you actually taste blood of this game then you are intensely watching what really happens next and as i say the most important shot in golf is the next one so i think that's an amazing idea if uh, we create these kind of small areas where people can actually just practice the game the popularity of the sport is definitely going to increase do you think also tournaments if uh, uh, they make uh, people to come and watch the game live on a golf course i know it's a little difficult but do you think that might also help no that's not required So now, sir, looking back at uh, your journey of a real estate developer, a golfer, an owner of the best golf resort of the country, what is the most memorable uh, thing that comes to your mind in this entire journey so far? I think there's so many things, na. How do you categorize any one memory? I don't know. I really don't know. <laughs> How do I answer that question? Whatever comes to your mind first, sir. <laughs> you mean a great memory? A great moment that is unforgettable. Ah. When I bought this land probably and when I dreamt of it and I created it. Wow. Probably. <laughs> wow. And what an impact it has had on the city and for this game. I'll ask you another question now. Uh we spoken about this but i want to ask a little more about if you could play with one person hmm. any one person who would it be there's no why? discussion it's sadguru only sadguru only. there's no discussion he is mesmerizing wow ah 
I mean, to play with him is like, uh, I mean, all the bucket list can be completed in one game. <laughs> it's, he's so good. Amazing. He's so amazing. And he's a great golfer. Right. It's not that he's just hitting the ball. He knows how to play golf right. Right. So, he's challenging. And uh, we just do some verbal bets. Wow, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, de-stressing, yes, the game is. But with him, it's a total de-stress. True. <laughs> and so, education. Correct. Knowledge building. Right. He takes you to the next level. True. Wow, that is really amazing. There's and nobody else. Does he beat you or you beat him? <laughs> oh, well, <laughs> it's a game. <laughs> nobody <Fantastic>. wins. <laughs> So, if you could uh, leave behind one piece of wisdom or an advice to all those who are playing this game and all those who want to start playing this game, what would be that message? Nothing. The people who are not playing and I would leave it, leave it all these messages for the youngsters. Because at our age and the age above a particular time, you are done and dusted. You play it for fun, for kick's sake. But I want people to play for loving the game in terms of looking at it as a profession. Right. This is a great profession to make here. There's a lot of working opportunities for youngsters. I don't know why people have not yet understood that. So my message would be probably eat your pa rack your parents' brains, go and rack your principal and your administration in the school and colleges their brain that create facilities for us, right. for the parents to allow them to go and for the institutions to create small facilities. Or, uh, you know, the, like you have PT time or something like that. Right. You create a week's a four-hour slot, allow them to go. Right. Allow them to play. People, if they approach us, we will give the facility. We will give the coaches. We will give the uh, infrastructure. Why not? Right. But unless the youngsters look at it, understand it and take it up, it's not going to happen. They think the ball is so small. But it's not so. Right. It's a small ball, but it's the toughest ball to put in the hole. That's true. <laughs> Coming back to Oxford, the Oxford Premier League mm -hmm. is one of the best golf leagues of India. The most watched, the most loved and people aspire to be a part of it. How did you create that? Well, I think I created it with you and uh, the idea to create this league more than the enjoyment of the game is to create, see we have a thousand two hundred members, not many know each other, just a few come in a particular time and play. This gives an opportunity for 250 people to assemble, play with each other, know each other, understand each other. 250 acquaintances you made like in one week of the year, right. you made 200 new people you know and you've taken their phone numbers and put them in the mobile. Right. Who knows? Somebody will be useful in some way. Some may be a great doctor. Some may be a great businessman. Some may be related to your business. You create a business community. Because this is an amateur league. It's not like a championship league or something like that. Correct. But the city becomes vibrant. Right. The golfing community of the city becomes vibrant. And that vibrancy gives the courage, the enjoyment, the social uh, color or a framework, let's say, to meet new people. Right. Fantastic. And uh, sir, before we wrap up, uh, one very one topic very close to my heart and which I've been thinking of from a very long time is how to get the world to India, to golf. Why not uh, make India as one of the top golfing destinations in the world? What would that uh, require? That's not too far away. I do understand that the Far East, Middle East offers better options. Price-wise, we are a better option also. However, I think what uh, now that there are so many private courses coming up, okay, with open businessmen like me, we want people to come. We have hotels, we have rooms. What is happening now is all these private golf course resorts are adding wellness as a major activity now. Right. Because wellness is the next biggest thing in the world. Right. So wellness is coming in. Along with wellness, <clears throat> F&B. So, great F&B outlets. People right. love to eat. Right. People love that adventurous life when they go to a golf course because they want to really enjoy that evening, the next day morning. And now India can make circuits between right. cities. Right. And I don't think 
why a tourist will not come? India has got the richest culture. Right. I mean, just to, I mean, for their wives, if they are a company or the spouses, let us say, because a lot of ladies play golf. There is a lot to do. Correct. Every city has its own charisma. True. Enjoy that. The guys are playing golf. Who cares? In the evening, they're partying. It's fun. Right. So I think that color has, flavor has already arrived. So I think tourism is not too far away. It's just about to explode, shall we wow. say. That'll be amazing. I mean, another <laughs> feather in the cap of uh, India. So, one moment that you're really proud of as a golf course owner and as a businessman. Okay. That's an easy one. So, what I'm proud about is Rohan, the next generation in my family. Wow. My eldest son. A single digit handicapper. Started yes. playing when I was young because, of course, that's how I started golf when he went to the golf course. Balanced boy, focused head, everything well educated in boarding schools. And I think he has the vision to continue this legacy right. and to grow it in a structured manner. Excellent. Maybe I am a little old school and he is new school. That's probably the only difference. But I'm pretty proud of the fact that, you know, this is not going to go to waste. Right. I have this boy here who exactly knows what my dream was. And I think he's sinking with the dream. Wow. So I think in the next few years, as he is taking over slowly everything that is here, this is going to be another rocking story. Rocking. And uh, so is this, uh, I mean, the iconic at Oxford, the, the new rooms of the hotels that are coming up at this beautiful resort, was this your vision or is it uh, Rohan's ideas? Well, it's a realist story finally. Right. All has been executed by Rohan, definitely. But it's with discussion in the family, right. so that's fine. But I think we are going to create one of the greatest uh, townships of all times. Amazing. <laughs> it's, it's just so amazing to even just come into the resort. You actually feel like you're in yeah. heaven. And especially in the winters and the rainy season, this place is... So as he takes this over, then my job becomes how do we take it... Who, the concept of taking, thinking that golf is only for the classes to the masses. masses right. That's my job. <laughs> right. Amazing. And uh, is there any other city where Oxford is planning to build a golf course? Not there? really, but I'm associating with one or two places. Right. It's still in the pipeline. Yeah. When it happens, we'll let you know. If that is Goa, that'll be great. <laughs> there are two places in the country. <laughs> we look forward to that, sir. Sir, it's been an absolute honor. This was my dream to have you <laughs> as this is your first one. first guest. Ah, so I'm the guinea pig, guinea pig. <laughs> you're, you're, my, you're my dream guest and I think I've had an amazing conversation with you. Thank you so much. So thank you so much, sir, for Pleasure. giving your time. <laughs> Thanks a lot, sir. Pleasure. Thank you.